Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Place Academy for Civil Services, the video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. The important news and editorial that would be relevant for the preparation of civil services examination will be discussed in this session. So let's get started with the news topic list. And before I start, just to tell you that the UPSC has released civil services prelims examination result 2023. So those of you who have made through this list, congratulations to all of you. Do not waste a single day. Put your all best efforts in the mains examination. There's no time left. Practice a lot many questions. Then it is possible that you will be called for the interview. And those who are not in the list, do not get disheartened. There's always a way out. I understand. No, I'm not just out of sympathy. I'm not saying you have a potential no? because of the pattern change and the nature of the questions which was tougher for the this year uh, it is possibly likely that most of the eligible candidate and even those people have put in hard effort were not able to make this but do identify where you were lacking no forte some of the areas where you feel that you are lacking and you can appear for next year and even if you are someone who is looking for alternative you can have a balanced approach in your life. There's always a way out. So this is all basic. I just wanted to you know this is something that we can discuss a lot in detail, but not at this time. This is not the right situation. But for all those who have made through the list, make sure you're not wasting a single day. Now, starting with the news discussion for the day, I'm in the topic that is for 12th of June. The first is G20 Development Ministerial Conclave. Second, center to complete 3G digitalization of museum. Third, Indian Air Force and Army joint exercise in the central sector. Second last, that is RBI circular for willful defaulter on loan settlement. And the last is an editorial, the caring city. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further ado, let's get started. And if you're new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe at Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video helpful, do hit a like button. So starting with the first news of the day, that is G20 Development Ministerial Conclave, something important for Gender Studies Paper 2, that is bilateral regional grouping and agreement involving India and affecting India's interest. So recently, India's External Affairs Minister has held a talk with German Development Minister and Australian counterpart focusing on the bilateral relations and cooperations under the G20 framework. India, which is the current chair for G20, is looking forward to have various verticals where the development can be discussed and co-development could take place between the member countries. India will be holding the G20 membership till November 2023. Now, the meeting took place on the margin of G20 development minister conflict, which is which is actually being uh, been held in Varanasi. It is ongoing till 30th, 30th of this month, 1 third, 1 3, that is 13. This will continue. And the G20 development minister meeting will participate when see the total participation, there will be 200 delegates that will be uh, having their presence. Now, two main sessions are there, uh, specifically that will focus on major area, the thrust area. So first is multilateralism that call for collective actions for accelerating progress towards the sustainable development goal. Very important, jo 70 SDG goals to achieve measures that will be discussed and green development that is a lifestyle for environment approach which is again a brainchild of prime minister of india and he has come up with this concept during the cop 26 meeting so something directly important and relevant for examination now some key focus area that will be there for this g20 meeting the focus area has been identified which include the developmental challenges slow down in the global economy there are various reasons to it debt stress effect of climate change which is something i mean across the globe this concern is there pollutions biodiversity loss rising poverty and inequality cost of living crisis 
supply chain disruption around the world. This is also because of the Russia and Ukraine war and geopolitical tensions and conflict. This is also highlighting the part of Russia, Ukraine, even India, China and uh, China, Taiwan. So there are a lot of issues that is surrounding in terms of the global geopolitical crisis. Now, significance of this meeting, this G20 meeting, which is there at Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh, this meeting is an opportunity for collectively actions to accelerate and achieving the part of sustainable development goal. And this platform will aim to foster the synergies between the development environment, climate agendas, while also advocating for the trade-off that have a back progress for the developing countries. So everything unanimously will be discussed. The member countries and all 200 delegates that are participating will look forward for the alternative solutions and way forward for some of the global problem that is concerning. Now, moving to the other news that is center to complete 3D digitalizations of museum, something important for gender studies paper too. That is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations. So digitalization in a way is something very important in the context of present generations. You see the part of 21st century digitalization has an alternative to everything. Now, in order to ensure better conservations of art visits, the union government plan for 3D digitalization of museum under the administrative control by 2023 and it is expected the list of museums rakhi gayi hai, un sare museums ko digitalize ki jayengi. Now what is 3D digitalization is a process by which the digital museum is created or 3D part of the images and even object is created. I'll show you some of the images. So see this is how it actually look like 3D images, right? These are the true 3D images that you can make through that how it actually look like. Now, list of museum for 3D digitalizations. Kaun kaun se museums mein rakhe gain? So, this will include Sala Jan Museum in Hyderabad, Allahabad Museum in Prayagraj, now Indian Museum in Kolkata in West Bengal, Victoria Memorial Hall again in West Bengal, Kolkata, National Museum and National Gallery for Modern Arts. These two museums are there in New Delhi, right? So, ye dono jo hai, ye New Delhi. Now, the culture ministry has 10 museums under its ambit and these all will be under part of the sanctions. But initially, the museums are in the government abhi prioritize. Kar rahi. And if you see the part of the ASI, that is the Archaeological Survey of India, they have 44 museums in the specific locations. And accordingly, the process will further proceed so that these museums are also into the 3D digitalization process. Now, merits of 3D digitalization, ki agar baat kare, there are a lot of merits. The first, beside aiding conservation, 3D digitalization of the museum can offer visitors with new way to access and explore the collection. Now, these type of options and even folder point can be even used in both prelims and mains examination. You can get a direct question also. 3D models can be used in augmented reality, which I mean, part of uh, virtual reality. Bhi kehte and learning experiences facilitating the 3D printing. The digitalization process involves 3D scanning, which means analyzing the real world object or environment to collect three dimensional data in shape and possibility of its appearance. The collected data is then used to construct digitalized 3D models. Now, how the execution process will work? Because government has come up with a plan. Uski executions, there will be some software and some agencies that will be taking care for it. So for this 3D digitalization, the past of Jatan Virtual Museum Builder, this is J-A-T-A-N, will be taking the part of software assistance. And this is designed by the Human Centered Design and Computing Group with the Center for Developing of Smart Computing Pune. So this is again relevant for many other government examination that you will be appearing for. And Chetan is a client server applications which features of image cropping, watermarking, unique numbering, management of digital objects with multimedia representations. Now it can create 3D virtual galleries and provide public access through web mobile and touchscreen chaos. 
Now, Indian Army and Indian Air Force joint exercise in the center sector, something important for general studies paper three, that is the various security forces, agencies and their mandate. The Indian Air Force has carried out joint exercise with the Army in the center sector and deployment of multi-combat assets to check the operation and readiness of the two forces. The exercise follows Indian Air Force two strategic missions over Indian Ocean and involve the fighter jets like Rafale and Su-30 MKI jets. Those of you will be appearing for CAPF examination, either it is CAPF or CDS, un bachyo ke liye is tarah ke sawal kafi important. Now, earlier missions, that was there. So a few years back, a fleet of Su-30 MKI jet flight were there from the Indian Air Force. That is a strategic missions in Indian Ocean for ATAR. And similar operation was also carried out by four Rafale jet. Rafale, we have, uh, you know, where we have get basically from Germany, we have uh, bought in, in the India. And recently, Sukhoi has got the southwestern region in Indian Ocean demonstrating the operational powers capabilities carried out the right. The Indian Air Force has two missions that is that China has been ramping up presence in the Indian Ocean region that is largely considered as a backyard of Indian Navy. So definitely India is taking its all best possible you know, preventive method to ensure that there is no hindrance from any other country. Rafale jet are India's first major acquisitions of the fighter plane 23 years and Sukhoi jet are imported from Russia and um, the part of the Rafale is imported from France. Rafale jet are capable of carrying the long potential weapons, I mean the potent weapons and the part of the range, the state of our jet that is being used in India. Now, RBI circulars on willful defaulters and fraudster loan settlement, RBI has come up with some circulars and guidelines, some leniency where they have been also provided with an opportunity to pay their debt or even clear the write-offs. Something important for general studies paper three, that is Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization, resource, growth and development. So RBI ne recently latest circular release ki hai and this circular says that the willful defaulters and companies involved in fraud can go for compromise settlement on technical write-offs. Write-offs means that you are paying and making the settlement by banks or the financial companies. So this is something again important to reduce the part of non-performing asset that is accumulating both for the banking sector and the NBFC, right? So ye dono ke liye kafi zyada important. Banks can undertake the compromise settlement on technical write-offs regarding the account categorized in the willful defaulter or fraud without prejudice or any kind of criminal proceeding against such debaters. So this provisions of criminal proceedings has been completely wiped out or unko settlement ke liye options di jayenge. Now minimum cooling period will be there. Once you make the payment, the central bank has also directed that the minimum cooling of period will be there for at least 12 months before making the fresh exposures to the borrowers who are undertaking the compromise settlement. So once you have settled, it is not immediately that you will be getting any other loan. There will be a cool off period, right? Uh, this means the willful defaulter or a company involved in a fraud can get new loans after 12 months or executing the compromise settlement. Now there's a civil score that works. So accordingly, if you have civil kafi low, if it is low, I mean, uh, close to like uh, if it is 700 or below 700, 720. So you will be not able to avail any kind of loan. So civil is being reported. So uske liye minimum one year ki cool off period rakhi gai. The regulated entities like bank, financial companies are free to stipulate the cooling period in terms of their broad uh, approved policies. Now, when it comes to compromise settlement, the bank has also approved several compromise settlement running into 100 crores of huge reductions in outstanding payment that will not repair by the borrowers leading to huge losses for the banks. A compromise settlement with the borrower or with uh, involving the part of remission sacrifice is negotiated by bank provided that it is assured and such compromise such as not at the early recovery 
due to their save cost and the bank in terms of legal expenses and other cost. So compromise settlement will be there, but there are some procedures, the due process of law will be followed so that there's amicably you know, the dispute is coming between both the deporters and the lenders. Now, moving to the editorial of the day, the caring city, something important for general studies paper too for the means, that is the welfare schemes for the vulnerable section of the population by the center and the state government. So what I'll be discussing under this editorial, first talking about the theme and the focus of this article, it's about disabled friendly infrastructure and development. First is like example and lesson, need for inclusive cities, possible solutions, India's opportunity at G20 and the way forward. So just to give you the background why we are discussing this editorial and this is very important even you can get a question in mains examination because India is also putting emphasis or globally if we talk about disabled friendly infrastructure ki baat zyada hui hai for developed countries and for developing countries. So out of 1 billion, 1 billion people I mean in total of the world. 15% of the world population is experiencing some form of disability and the disability prevalence in the higher of the developing countries. A variety of societal barrier hoti hai in logo ke saath, where the person with disability are not able to enjoy their life with the fullest and even have a paucity to access to the infrastructure facilities which is being given by the government. So the barrier include limited accessibility, inadequate educational structures and the poverty. Now, person with disability face many challenges, basically if you urban lifestyle ki baat kare, and even availing the part of urban facilities, they people lack to a highest context. Now, enabling the environment will have an inclusive infrastructure needed to allow them with same opportunities, enjoy cultural, economic and social life with non-disabled person. And this include that we need to do many things. I mean, providing them how independently they can functions, access to workplace, and even education, sports, and many other things. Now, quick examples that will help you. And even if you're writing in mains, you can use this. Uh, Manasi Joshi is a para badminton player who underwent a double leg amputation following a road accident at the age of 22. But she was so confident and she was so motivated and determined that she completed but uh, built an environment for the availability with the assistive technology and she decided that she will overcome this obstacle in the daily life that is ongoing or professionally badminton may that she has made a good acclaim. But this is not the conditions with everyone, right? Many people have lost uh, in the part of where they are actually lacking and even removing barriers can even give uh, Jitne bhi agar possibilities keep baat kare, often opportunities also many people do not can cope up with this grave situation. So we need to have an enabling environment where everyone is given a right time uh, with the opportunity and they should make them excel in particular area where they are required. Now need for inclusive cities ki baat ki gai hai, the two mega part and the two mega trend that is involving in part of the inclusive cities. First is that India is urbanizing. And rapidly it is projected to add four new mega cities. If you see by 2030, two mega cities will be added to India. Uh, in the part whether there are five mega cities that is there in now, two two or mega cities be operate hungi and the bad speak. According to 2011 census, one of the three percent with disability in India is roughly eight million people. They are living in the cities, and second, the number of person with recognized disability and the share of population could arise to Disaster, climate risk, demographic change, broader definition of disability in line with the global norms. Now, the possible solutions, uh, what are the best possible solution and how we can achieve it? So first is having a powerful solutions to this challenge that is with the help of innovations, technology and ICT, right? This is only the way out in the present 21st generation. Now, this is something uh, where the key insurance and inclusive development will take place with the help of urban transformations, improving and access to quality of life for all citizens. Nowhere it is more evident in India that where a world-class digital governance system, dynamic tech uh, sectors covering all delivery, exclusive poverty, uh, 
prosperity and resilience. So just to give you an idea, see, when it comes to digital governance and the part of the digital system, उसकी कोशिश ये होती है कि इंक्लूसिव प्रॉस्पेरिटी को आगे बढ़ाया जाए एंड अल्टीमेटली ऑल ऑफ अस और ऑल ऑफ इंडिविजुअल आर बेनिफिटेड द स्पेसिफिक टारगेटेड ग्रुप आर बेनिफिटेड दैट इज द सोल पर्पस ऑफ डिजिटल गवर्नेंस नो द स्पिरिट ऑफ सॉलिडारिटी इंक्लूसिविटी रिफ्लेक्टिंग इन द जी ट्वेंटी थीम शुड ऑल्सो बी देर जो कि जी ट्वेंटी की थीम है वो अपने आप में इंक्लूसिविटी की बात करती है दैट कॉल फॉर वन अर्थ वन फैमिली वन फ्यूचर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टैगलाइन इवन यू कैन यूज इट फ्रीक्वेंटली इन द मेन्स पेपर Now, India के पास क्या अपॉर्चुनिटी है एज एफ टूल डू एट द बिगनिंग डिस्कसिंग सम अदर न्यूज वेर इंडिया इज हैविंग द प्रेसिडेंसी टिल नवंबर ट्वेंटी थर्ड दिस पर्टिकुलर ईयर दैट इज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री तो इस प्रेसिडेंसी में इंडिया के पास काफ़ी सारी अपॉर्चुनिटी है वेर दे कैन कम अप विद इंगेजमेंट इनिशिएटिंग द स्टार्टअप इंगेजमेंट वेर ग्लोबल प्लेटफॉर्म कैन इनेबल इको सिस्टम एंड मेम्बर्स एंड फाइनेंस द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी कैन ऑल्सो लॉन्च G20 Digital Innovation Alliance to showcase innovation solutions to create and part of alliance partner in innovation ecosystem so these are some of the possible work which india has actually done and more can be done to excel and uh, catalyzing digital and for futures is a priority for the urban 20 engaging in G20 and how to discuss that technology can be the best utilized making this city management more effective and inclusive so this is how the things can work out india ke paas jo g20 ki presidency hai that is a boon and definitely i mean uh, that is a boon for india right so uh, india can definitely potentially use it so this opportunity should never be missed aur ise india ko potentially bahut had tak aage badh ke use karne ki zarurat hai now the way forward creating a inclusive and accessible india will require a behavioral changes that call for capacity building investment in accessibility infrastructure inclusive and accessible innovation this will help in the part of countries making towards equitable urban future envisaged amrit kal that is inclusive accessible safe resilient and sustainable india by 2020 47 so jo india ki uh, ek target rakhi gayi hai even for the part of the target which is there so this should be achieved and to achieve this we need to have a enabling environment and considering the fact jo sustainable development goal ke targets hain uske alave jo inclusivity hai uski taraf dhyan dene ki zarurat hai so this is how you can conclude the part of way forward moving ahead with the mcq questions of the day before i proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday question that is for saturday for first question the correct option was a for second question the correct option is a today's mcq for practice aapko CBDC के बारे में बताना है इट्स अ डिजिटल लीगल टेंडर इशूड बाय रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया द होल सेल डिजिटल करेंसी इज डिजाइन एंड फॉर द रिस्ट्रिक्शन एक्सेस टू द फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन सो डू चेक आउट फॉर द करेक्ट ऑप्शन सेकेंड इज अबाउट द इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस फॉर इलेक्शन एंड मैनेजमेंट बॉडीज ट्वेंटी इट इज हॉस्टेड बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्टैटिक्स एंड प्रोग्राम इंप्लीमेंटेशन इट हेल्ड अंडर द एजेस ऑफ United um, in United States Summit for Democracy Platform. So do check out for the correct option. Practicing a lot more current affairs with questions will give you an added advantages over the upcoming examination. So this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis, followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, you can reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.